Hello and welcome back to Trains A New Era. Thank you very much for joining me in this video and thank you very much for the support that I've been receiving over the past few videos, particularly the East Coast Mainline. I really do appreciate the likes and the views on that. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic. Today we're going to be continuing to have a look at the surveyor tool and I have checked it is called a surveyor tool because if we go here it says exit surveyor so it is still called the surveyor tool which I'm great that I'm really happy it's great that they kept the name uh, so we're going to be continuing along and as I said we're not going to be looking at uh, what we did in the last video in the last video we were looking at as you can see we were looking at some sort of terrain optimization uh, so we were looking at how to how to get decent terrain. Obviously, I did this all very quickly, but we were looking at how to get terrain, how to get water running, how to create a, a river. So if you go along here, you can see I created a river with proper banks. As you can see along here, I created some of that. How to add um, how to add new tiles and you know a few few things here and there. So we were just looking at the bits and bobs. That's what we were doing. We were looking at bits and bobs to do with terrain terrain management. Now. What I am going to say is that before we look at what we're going to be doing today, and today we're going to be looking at uh, laying track and understanding how that works, we're going to see what happens uh, with that, received one great tip. Oh, uh, Actually, one tip I did receive, which I did figure out immediately after the recording session because I accidentally pressed it a few times during the recording session, is by using the arrow keys we can tilt uh, up and down so we can actually see how this looks, which is a lot better. Uh, than being able to, you know, not being able to see anything all the time. So that's pretty good. Um, the other tip I received was to use the square brackets, or the brackets as they're called, um, which is near the return key for most keyboards, when painting. So if we're going to paint and use the return key, then what it does, and I, I knew what this did because this is a rotation tool, and you can see there it's rotating in increments of 40 five degrees you can just see there and uh, does that give me a different key texture direction slash okay so you can see that it's, it's doing that let's see what slash does slash doesn't do anything so what that does though is when you're painting a texture if we have a look over here you can see the one complaint I had about the texture being very if you look at that it's very tiled but now if we just move a little bit back Look at this texture here. That does not look tiled at all. That looks a lot better. You can just see how much difference it makes just rotating constantly. So what you do is that the way to do this, I'm going to show you, is you're probably best off perhaps painting on top of it to start with uh, because it does, you'll notice that if you do light clicks, it sort of moves or adds a faint a fainter layer instead of completely obliterating the previous layer so what you do is whilst you're doing this just hold one of these keys so you can see look at the texture direction constantly spinning and then you just sort of do a circular fashion like that just keep it nice circular strokes not too quickly but not too slowly either and would you look at that look how nice that looks now let's do it over a, a lot of land let's do it over this area of land we'll increase the scale uh, no we'll we'll decrease the scale we'll increase the radius and let's see how well this works and don't just keep it just going in one direction do do quite quite a lot of movement around but a nice circular pattern circular patterns always work for getting textures going in a decent fashion as a matter of fact it looks like actually using a smaller radius is probably yeah it's a lot better which makes sense if you think about it because then a smaller radius means more rotations so that's pretty good and there you go and you can see how much better that texture looks as opposed to this that looks very unrealistic this looks pretty good and then you can just go around and go yeah we'll do some over here there you go like so and then we'll say we'll do some over here and we'll do some over here and then you know just nice nicely doing the area but anyway that's that's out the way so I just wanted to show you that to uh, for those people creating their own route also 
received a comment of someone saying that this is not something that's done uh, very often on on YouTube or on Twitch or anything like that. Um, creating roots, and they would like to see me create a create a whole root, a fictional root, as it were, maybe maybe a real life root, a whole root from scratch, showing all of this as it works in in an editor as opposed to just doing a little bit of tutorial showing you how to lay a bit of track a bit of a river and that if you would like to see that right now in the comments box let me know hit the like button and let me know in the comments box and i will do my best to make a video or make videos or consider making the videos i will have to have a look at how the time goes um and i'll have to talk to my patreon to see what they think of the idea to, and see if i can actually make a series on that because I would like to do that, I certainly would. And uh, speaking of patrons, oh, another little tip. If you press spacebar wherever your mouse is, that's where the cursor moves or the, the little compass. That's pretty neat. Uh, speaking of patrons, do consider supporting me on there, www.patreon.com slash ecgadget. Even one dollar helps. Uh, but anyway, let's get on with what we're going to do today. So we're going to use um, this area and I'm going to cover it in a little bit of a... Uh, should we go for some mud? Let's see if we can find some muddy terrain. Uh, not overgrown mud, we just want... Let's see what this is like. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. And you can see, again, we've got the texture there, so if we just do this... There we go, look at how nice that looks. Fantastic tip this was. Absolutely fantastic tip. So we're just going to create a little area, a little muddy area over here. And we're going to start laying some track on this area. Obviously, it's flat terrain. I'm doing flat terrain for demonstration purposes so that we can explore all the various different things that we can do with track. It's very important that we do that. There we go. I think that, that looks good enough to me. Yeah, look at that. That looks pretty good. Can't really see any symmetry on it. Very, very nicely done. You can see how it just fades. If you just do this, you can just have it fade very nicely into the grass. Cool. Right. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over here. F4, we can press tracks or we can just click the tracks button there, which actually brings out the pain like this. It's quite interesting how they bring out the pains because the whole thing comes out as opposed to just it opening up from the button. The whole button drags out, which is fine. So we've got track mode. We've got track side mode. And we've got track mark mode. So let's figure out what some of these do. So let's start with these and let's see what we have available to us. Um, so we've got a whole load of tracks. Uh, rails only. Got some track, aggregate track. Concrete track, dusty track, fabricated track. So we've got loads and loads of different types of tracks. What we're going to do, ooh, we've got some steel bridge. What we're going to do is we are going to go down to find, oh look, there's Oran tracks. Very nice. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can find some UK tracks. What's this? Stone bridge from the UK? Well, we'll see what we can do with that. Let's see what, let's see what the bridge around, oh, what the track around the UK could look like, which I believe these sort of tracks work pretty well for for the UK so let's try this one so let's see how does this work add track a a okay aha and very very easily all we've got to do is click so you start by clicking at one point and then that's it and there we go there's a bit of track laid down for us so then I'm assuming we can click at the second point and it will curve the track around to where we want. This is a very good tool. And interestingly enough, it curves the previous section of track as well. Is there a way to stop it potentially doing that? Uh, what's, what's this button? Straighten track. Uh-huh. Delete track. Uh, get track. Edit properties. Split the spline. That's pretty good. Move the track. All right. So let's try, let's try a bit of this. Let's. Let's go over here. Let's do let's do this and then let's do a fairly curved section of track like so. All right, so we've done that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see what happens if I try and straighten this track. There we go. Oh, that's brilliant. 
that's absolutely so I can straighten that track I can straighten that track if I really wanted to I could straighten that track that would curve that section straighten that track that would that's pretty good so I can straighten that I can straighten unstraighten straighten unstraighten and gives us a very very nice setup here fantastic that's pretty good now, now let's have a look at how the track looks I want to see close up how does this track look that's pretty good quality to me go away zoom out just a little bit that quality will do very nicely actually it's it's 3d you can see the track is clearly 3d it's got the right bump mapping on it for the for the sleepers so you've got some pretty good bump mapping on the sleepers right there and we've got the rail realistically done fantastic right all right so what we're going to do is we're going to lay a little bit more track down i want to see what it, what points are like in fact let's see what else we've got um track condition very nice so okay 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 hold on hold on hold on hold on that's for ah that's for actually changing up the tracks all right so we're using this track here so what happens is we huh we can change the properties right there of the track so it's not like we can change the properties of this right here now we've got all the advanced options but first of all let me see what a switch looks like so I'm going to try doing a switch we're going to use this one again and I assume if we do a, a switch from here yes it makes a junction as one would expect and it tells us where we can and cannot do a junction allows us to make some pretty fancy ones it does lag a little bit I must admit all right I'm going to try this one because it looks like the sleepers go a bit funny here so I'm going to try and find the funniest combination of sleepers and see whether that's just because it's not built it yet good test right here find a really funny combination of sleepers that looks kind of funny all right let's have a look and let's zoom in and amazingly that actually isn't a funny combination of sleepers that actually works quite realistically all right and now we'll try and delete some tracks so let's go ahead and use the delete tool so that's d on the uh that so it'll just delete up to the spline right but then how do i get rid of ah that's not what i wanted to do so how do i get rid of just the junction also how do i join this track up to that oh very easy actually so if you've deleted a section of track, so let's go over there and delete that. All you do is go back to add track, which is with the A key again. You click on the track you want to start with and click right as close as you can to the track and it'll connect it up for you. Fantastic. I like this tool and I remember why I used to like making tracks in trains. All right. Well, let's try a different, let's try a different approach now. Let's, oh, not do that. Let's attempt um someone gave me really good tips to make mountains as well I've, I've i'll have to read that uh tip back but it involved using tracks uh can we convert tracks that's a good question oops can we convert tracks let's have a look get gradient apply gradient remove default track condition apply track condition get track condition so i can get the track condition here and I can change this to 100 and I can apply oh hold on 50 apply I want to see does that visually make a difference 10 apply no I don't think it visually makes a difference default track condition apply alright um I'm assuming that doesn't change there uh, we can get the vertex height we can apply a vertex height and we can show oh we can show a curve radius hold on oh look at that it tells us the radius of the curve that's fantastic look curve 50 60 70 80 90 so that's a 90 meter curve and then we can go up here and we can say right what's the curve here This is a 300 and 320 
yeah this at this point is a 217 meter radius but then you can see it, it opens up opens up and then obviously that goes to infinity very nicely done actually i do like this let's try and get let's try and get a some sort of uphill climb going uh, and actually i want to see what would happen if we attempted to join two different types of track i want to see what would ha what it would look like there we go actually does it pretty well let's see is there any texture texture crossing yes there is but you can hardly notice it it's not flickering in and out is it so, yeah there is a, you can just see a bit of flicker there but then again who's going to be converting track types like that that easily but i like how it does this look does the sleepers all in one type and then goes ahead and changes it to this new type which i, I, I like these now the question is, can I change the rest to one? That would be a really fancy idea. So just convert them all to a different type of track. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, let's try and bring this up. So we're going to do this. We'll, we'll create this fairly long, like so. We're going to press, is it B to straighten? Yeah, we're going to straighten that section of track. We're going to adjust spline height. There we go. Let's see what happens. Bring it up 1.7 meters. Let's see how that looks. That was very easy, actually. Yeah, and it's, and it's brought it up really smoothly. That's very nicely done. Okay, so now if I were to say add more track, will it just add it from there it does and it brings it back down now that's interesting what if i were to say height value get vertex height here get vertex height there we go 1.7 and then add track would that keep it at 1.7 i'm just i'm just wondering no no it doesn't Okay, that's interesting. So how do I... So my, my question is, how do I get this? Delete spline point, insert spline point, smooth spline, adjust spline height. Apply. No, that doesn't seem to work. Oh, wait, did that... Is that just done it? So all we, all we did was attempt to drag it up. And yeah, that's actually brought it up to the, that height. Okay, so then we can probably... Ah, now, now I've got a new issue. I'm not sure how to apply vertex height. Now I'm not sure how to lower it or raise it again. That's a new... Oh, maybe if I just, just press that. Ah, yeah, okay. Okay, that's actually works pretty decently so let's say we were to bring that up to three meters so you can see that that's actually got a climb going on well well i'm impressed i'm impressed with that it's very easy to use very very easy to use oops don't want to right this is not as easy to use I'd rather there, there was... Is there any movement with WASD? No, there isn't. Obviously, that controls that. That's not as easy to use, but other things are. Right, and then we're going to say... Right, let's, let's see what we can do here. We're going to try and... Bring this... Right the way over. Obviously, this is very... Still very low, as you can see. But I just want to see... And that's how we'll pretty much finish the video. Eight meters up. Pretty steep. Let's actually let's actually do a bit more climb work here. Let's bring that up to three meters. Bring that up to around five or four and a half meters. Bring that up to Ah, do I, ah, okay, you've got to actually click on the on the spot on the ground, which is good. That's actually a lot easier than uh, than I would have thought. Okay, there we go. So now we've got a little bit of a bridge. 
and it and it actually works it actually works fairly nicely so now all we have to do is ooh, don't click that button right so now all we really have to do is add some scenery to it very nice but instead of adding the scenery we're going to just have a quick look at how everything else works for the last five minutes so we've got street lever we've got switch levers which uh, I, I believe has already been yeah they've already placed one here for me which is interesting uh, we've got junction direction does that mean I can change the direction of the junction here ah yes okay I can control junction direction there very good I can rotate the object I can delete the object I can get it I can move it I can do whatever I want uh, we've got track in so we can sort of let's see uh, sleeper stop bridge pole the only thing is I we don't have a do we have a search here oh yes we do okay so if we just go bridge uh, it does bridge and then what goes at the end of it so we can always go for buffers let's go and add some old buffers over here why not add mode add object there we go there's some buffers and they've added it on well, the wrong side but um I suppose I could rotate that object there we go so you, you press R and single click on it and it rotates really easy very very nice I like this I really do like this now I'm looking for signals I want to see uh, that's speed limit signs 10 20 that's not ours that looks Australian here we go signal British Railway uh, should we use dwarf signals invisible signals signal man let's see what this one looks like there we go come on come on fantastic now no oh, don't do that okay stop stop uh get object uh, that, yeah, that, that's not what I want to do. Edit properties. Edit properties of object. Uh, so not really, not really any properties we can edit. I was hoping maybe we could set up... No, no, I suppose it works exactly as it should. Um, I wonder, I do wonder, if I were to put this same signal out this side, would it give us the option to with the uh with the actual um what do you call it diverging track i wonder uh it does it does still give us that option hmm i was kind of hoping maybe it'd be smart and it wouldn't give us the option i'll rotate that around yeah it still gives us the option okay never mind never mind can't have everything so we could just add one of these like so and rotate them around there you go standard standard signals very very easy to lay track very impressed with that and then obviously we've got these which are track markers triggers I need to work out what all of these do obviously I know what some of them do for for example those for electric track um, don't know what that does priority marker I can understand direction marker I can understand track marker and triggers I can I, we can work out and then we have all of this stuff so let's see what there what there is for example we just stick a tree in look at that and it immediately starts you know you you start looking at this sort of stuff and it immediately starts bringing life to the area it really really does so what we're going to do is in the next video I just move how do I uh let's see quick drive maybe is there is there a quick drive over here let's save that uh yeah we're going to override that yes there we go fantastic there should be something that's like quick drive control and f2 let's see let's see what what comes out of this uh yeah yeah so we can add trains whatever that's not what i'm looking for though i just want to i just want to see this area there we go not that area this area where we laid some track so let's see what that Ooh, turns out 
looking like? Come on. Fantastic. Okay, so that's where I'm going to end it. Uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it there, and then we'll see in the next video. We'll start having a look a bit more at scenery, working out. We might try and put a bridge on this, a proper bridge, and then we'll see how the trains work and how we can get things running on it. So, thank you very much for watching. Please remember to hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to the channel for more videos on trains, a new era. Leave a comment in a comment in a comments box yeah I'm sure in a comments box or the comments box below uh, letting me know what you think again like i said if you want to see a series where i actually create a full route a uh, fictional route uh, do let me know in the comments box do hit the like button and please do support me on patreon that would make it so much easier and so much more possible for me to do that even if it was just one dollar and one dollar will give you access to the lounge on my discord server so you do get something in return at the very least so, uh, yeah, I hope you guys consider that www.patreon.com slash easy gadget. Um, that's about all from me. I hope you guys did enjoy this episode. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed it and I hope that you want to see more and I hope that I can make more next time. Like I said, we'll be looking at trackside objects and looking at actual scenery, houses, uh, bridges, lights, stuff like that. Maybe a bit more on signals might even get a training. We will have to see. I will see you guys next time in Trains, A New Era.